Hey guys, we're back for part three, needle felting the zebra diker. And I have sped it up a little bit, just to help it go a little bit faster. So in this one, we're going to put a little bit more wool on him. I'm getting a little bit more on the spine. And we're going to use just a little chunk of rolled up wool for the chest cavity, help fill that in. And then we're going to make two more little rolled up fluffy pieces for the belly. And this will be the beginning of the belly. Later on we will build it up a little bit more, but this is just to get some wool on. Just helps it go a little bit faster. So we're just wrapping all of that together. And again, I've learned a lot of these techniques from Serafina Fiber Art. should check out some of her videos. She has some amazing, amazing beginner and intermediate and advanced tutorials, fun little projects. Okay, so now we've got some fluff on him. So I'm putting some of my, this is still core wool, and if you're just using your off-white chunky core, then um, you actually could use that here. You wouldn't have to use a colored core if you're not using that. We're going to put some top coat over the top of it. Just filling out his all his little muscles and skin. some on the inside of the legs just filling that in and I don't have a certain order that I work in generally I'll see something that needs to be done and I'll go for it but always try to work on each side if I do one side then I do the other side because it's too easy to put a project down and then come back and make the two sides not quite look the same. So it's always good to mirror sides. And I do advise to pick one of your favorite pictures of your animal. And you're going to primarily work off of that picture. Of course, you'll have other ones that are different angles and front and back and top and all of that good stuff but there are so many different uh, pictures on Google and encyclopedias and things that if you try to work off too many you're gonna get confused because they all look a little different so for the markings and for the general look I would pick one of your favorites to really emulate and so uh, you'll see what I did here is I just did a little wrap to put some meat on the upper arm, but I'm still leaving it flexible. Got his little armpit there and his little elbow. Put 
put some on one side and then I put some on the inside. Fill that out. Yeah, it's not looking quite so skinny now. He's getting nice and chunky. And here's our uh, wool that we made the colors, blended the colors earlier. So I'm going to begin working on the legs. And the legs, you'll see, have two different colors in them. Let's see, here I'm showing the bend, the bend, and we're going to make the little knee joint. So we're just kind of crisscrossing back and forth, making a little bubble on that joint. Getting a little knobby knees. Doing this with the top coat. We'll work on the legs of the top coat from now on since they're so skinny. Just a nice thin little piece. Wrapping it, pulling it pretty tightly. Leaving a spot down here because we're going to put dark on the bottom and a little dark at the top. This is a beautiful horse coat. Kind of a really pretty mahogany. I uh, can't remember the name of the color. It's a really nice kind of a bay, bay horse type color, I believe. I haven't uh, glued the hooves just yet. It, it would be okay to do that before you put the fiber on, but I'm just making sure I've got them exactly like I want it, and I'll, I'll go back later and dab a little bit on there just to help it last. Maybe in the next video we'll do some of the Mod Podging. Now we're doing the other leg, just like we did that one. And you see how it's making kind of stripes on the leg when you do wrapping. I like to go back in the finishing phases and do some little fibers up and down to kind of blend that in so we're not quite to that stage yet so don't worry about the stripey look just yet just getting that fiber on there I'll do the upper arm on this side I'm always referencing my picture and I start to put the dark at the top let's get it on there in the area checking both sides I start having some weird camera issues with the the lighting. It wants to, for some reason, blow out my whites. I don't know if it's because of the gloomy day outside or my camera just went wonky. So I'm having a little struggle, a little fight with the with the lighting here. Hopefully I get that figured out by next video.
So I lowered the the brightness so it's a little dark, but I couldn't get the camera to cooperate adjusting itself, so I manually adjusted it so I could get a little bit more finishing in this go around. So here I'm I'm putting a little pillow fluffy bit at the chest. Helping to fill that out a little bit, and I'm always looking at my reference picture, and I start to do the neck, and then I'm like, mm, wait, let's give it a little bit more structure. So see what how the front part, it's flat on the sides, and it it's bigger on the front and back, and so I make a little noodle. Tack that on there. Nice little structural piece. And I'm showing how you don't want it to be like big around, like kind of like we did the belly. You want it to be formed where it's it's uh, thinner on the sides and thicker at the chest. So now we're working on the back feet. And I wrap a little bit of the fiber in between the toes there. And right now I'm just tacking all of this on I'm going to go back and really finesse and get everything where it needs to go. Always looking at that reference picture. We're beginning to do markings. Alrighty, there you have it. That's it for today. Until next time.